What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at True Automotive working with Master Check Joel over here. Uh, we've got Canon Count's truck today. We're gonna be putting the RC fabrication spindle gussets on a fresh brand new set of spindles. Um, now you guys don't have to do that unless obviously your spindle is bent, but we weren't sure if cannons were bent. We thought they might be, so we got some fresh spindles for the spindle gussets. We'll show you how to get everything off if you're using your existing spindles and how to put on and weld the new kit. Let's get started. All right, step one of every install with Joel is give him a ghost. Oh, ghost. <laughs> oh, ghost. All right, so once you have your wheel and tire off, you're gonna go ahead and remove the brake caliper. Is that a 17? 17 millimeter. 17 mil on the back side. Mm -hmm. And Joel's got that, uh, we won't say the word, but it's our strength. <laughs> it's true. Once you've got your caliper and rotor off, go ahead and pull off the dust cap here. Then you're gonna have access to the pin, your security nut, and you're gonna take off the uh, CV axle nut here so we can get this pulled out. And then we'll be able to take this whole assembly off once we get the upper control arm off. And the tie rod. Once you guys have that dust cap and everything off, this is gonna be a 35 millimeter nut. You're gonna hit it with the Ooga Dooga machine by Milwaukee. And then that'll give this freedom so you can pull the whole spindle out to get the CV out. But we're gonna do this guy as well. So you go ahead and remove that cotter pin and then Joel's gonna hit that with the Ooga Doogas as well. That is a 19. And Joel says that is a 19. Yes sir. So as you guys can see, Joel was hitting this part of the spindle with a hammer to break this loose. If you try and hit the top, you run the risk of damaging the threads and not getting that nut back on there when it comes back to reassembly. So hit here. Once you guys have this all out of the way, you've got your ABS and wheel speed sensor here. Go and remove that with a 10 mil. Get it out of the way. Feed it to the engine. And then now we should be able to remove the knuckle bolts on the bottom and pull this whole thing, angle the dangle out. He has to wait to do this nut because it's shifted. It looks like it bent, which cracked this. So we have to turn it around to be able to get this nut. So now once you have all those 17 mils loosened all the way, you're gonna take a flathead, pry bar, whatever you can fit in between here, and just kind of work your way around to get this whole wheel bearing off, or hub assembly off. All right, now we can call this Willy, because it's free. <laughs> so now you guys should look like this. We've got our CV axle protruding through the spindle assembly here. We're gonna have to remove the knuckle down here to separate the spindle from the lower control arm. And then we'll be able to access this nut inside here with these SPCs and this whole assembly will be ready to come off. And these are a 19 millimeter. Now those are free. Now we're able to pull this out and then rotate this as we needed. And boy. Dang, now we have full access, no hiding now. So Joel is making his own leverage, using a Mexican speed wrench here to hold this thing on while he gets some leverage on this nut up here. They are tight. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's your best bet right there. Oh. Whoa, look, we self-clearanced ourselves. <laughs> that old gusset just broke. There she goes. 
There's the old one. And we got some new ones. Toyota OEM right there with the new gussets. So Joel is marking where he has to grind the spindle down to be bare steel so he can make sure he's got a clean surface to weld the new gussets to the spindle itself. We've got the spindle put together um, on this guy here, you can kind of see, and we'll show you the process of getting everything lined up with the little locking pins and go from there. Yes, sir. Now that Joel has everything marked of where he needs to grind, we're gonna get a grinder and get this down to bare metal. So now your spindle should look something like this, where it's bare metal on there, all the way up and around at the top, and then back down all the way around at the bottom. Something close to this and up here as well. So now we're gonna show you how these puzzle pieces go together. So the first one is gonna be the main one with the RC Fabrication logo. And we're gonna put that on the outside. You can see it goes right around the spindle down at the bottom. And then we're gonna put the brake line bolt in to hold this in place. And that'll tell us that it's pretty much lined up. Just like so. Now we can put on the inside piece, which is gonna have the sharp points, because that's gonna wrap around the inside of the spindle here. And it will line up with this hole right here as well. And then you're gonna have these little teeth that go into this outside bracket, just like that, top and kind of in the middle. Now we can put on our box bracket which is gonna be this guy here. And you want that circle or hole to be towards the top where the upper control arm goes in. And that'll feed into the same thing as little teeth, lock it in. Just like that. Now you've got your outside box, right? And then this little piece here, is gonna basically close this off when it's ready to go in. So it'll look kind of like that. And then we've got our little top piece here, which is gonna go on the top of the spindle like this to box up and close up the top. And these are side specific. So now we'll go through, take everything apart and start welding it all on. Side note is this top hole here is for your sway bar, but we don't run sway bars because down travel. So we're not gonna worry about that. Also, before you guys start trying to put this together around your spindle, get where it roughly goes and roughly together and then grind everything down that you need to grind down like you saw Joel doing, um, marking it all. It goes together a lot easier once there's some material missing on the spindle. Joel has everything welded up and now he's just going through with the wire wheel and cleaning it all up. So when you guys are done, it should look something like this. Everything is boxed in. You can see where all those pieces have now kind of become one. And then on top, that little corner piece is now welded in there to the outside as well. Holes all still line up. Looks really good. We're gonna let it cool off a little bit before we spray it. And now if you guys are doing brand new spindles as well, you will have to put the new rings in or transfer them from your old spindle to new. If you're doing your spindles that were already on the truck, you can just leave them in there. Once you guys have everything cleaned up like Joel does here, we're gonna hit this with two or three coats of steel it to protect it since it is steel. Um, then we put the little dust cap back in here and this will be ready for reinstallation.
Once you guys have a coat of steel it or paint on your new spindles with gussets, go ahead and start and repeat the process on your second set. All right, we got a couple coats of steel it on both spindles front and back. So now we're gonna reverse the process Joel did earlier and put everything back in. So we're gonna do the upper control arm first, get that slot, get that uh, bolt in, and then we're gonna start tightening it up. And we are in a shop, so you are gonna hear ugga duggas. <laughs> so we get that nut going, and then we're gonna slide the CV through. We transferred over that little seal gasket thingamajig, and then this guy here. But if you guys are using your factory spindles, you won't have to do that. And then we can feed that through. Line up the knuckle for the lower and get some bolts started. All right, what you guys just saw Joel do, do is stick a wobble in there and snug that down ahead of time so we don't have to fight it later. Tricks of the trade, put a socket here between the lower and the knuckle so that he can torque this thing down in the air without this just turning on him. Yeah, that's what you want. One million foot pounds. What is it, 150? Uh, I do 100, I think it's supposed to be 95. You heard the man. Just round up, a little bit. All right, so knuckle is torqued. Spindle to upper control arm is torqued. And now we're gonna do the hub assembly. All right, Joel is gonna give those a once over with a little bit longer 17 for some more leverage. While he does that, I'm gonna put the tie rod back on. Same way it came off through the bottom, give it a good press, and then do a little casting nut on top, and then we'll put the cotter pin through. I think my hand tight was enough, Joel. <laughs> he said, oh, it's like, yeah. All right, so these are torqued to about 100, and now we're gonna hit this at about 85. Dang. Also, so the next cotter key lines up. Yep, and now we can put the cotter key through, and we should be good. The cotter pin goes through. Dang, a fresh one too, huh? Oh yeah, special treatment. Special treatment for Kanon. Dang. All right, so after that's on, we're gonna start putting on the brake assembly. So we'll put on the cotter pin for the CV and then the little blue protection nut that goes over there. Put the rotor on, put the caliper on. After that, you guys should be pretty much good. We just have to put the wheel speed sensor ABS lines in and then wherever you remove these from on the factory spindle, you're just gonna put them back on back here. Now that the Cali pepper is on, we can route the ABS line to get the wheel speed sensor and everything in there and then bolt that all to the spindle and you guys should be almost done. It's another trick of the trade. Put a screwdriver in the slot there. So when you torque this to 150, this is gonna stop it from spinning until you hear that click clack patty whack. Give the nut a bone. Now she's ready. Now we'll put this guy through there. And then this guy on top. He said again, another new one? Dang. So one thing we noticed with the ABS lines and the brake lines and everything is this bracket doesn't quite fit around the back part of the spindle gusset because it is so thick. So we're bending this bracket out. I'm gonna repaint all this. Um, once we get this on there, we're gonna use that bolt to basically suck it in and then we'll bend it back as much as we can after that. But now that this is going on, this will all get bolted back up, wheels and tires on and go for alignment and it'll be ready to go. So there you go. There's the install of the RC Fabrications Spindle Gusses. These things are beefy as hell. All right, there you guys go. There is the install process of the RC Fabrications Spindle Gussets. 
Uh, Joel obviously did a killer job. Didn't get him a ghost today, but I got one in the fridge for him. Um, these are by far the beefiest spindle gussets I think I've seen so far. Yes, there's a decent amount of pieces to them, but the way they work together and box in that spindle is really, really nice. I was gonna be running these, but I went with Marlin Crawler and they have their own entire new spindle. So we figured we'd put them on Cannon's truck, my good buddy, and beef up his spindles from what he had before. But if you guys like the video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll put a link for these spindle gussets in the description of this video. Until next time, peace. Thank you.